Greetings, fellow CNC workers. This is my second video about this hold down method, and I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about what I do to cr cut acrylic so that maybe beginners and everybody has questions about feeds and speeds and depths of cut and bits and how to hold things down. And I'm going to try to cover them all quickly. We're going for under two minutes on this video, but I don't know if I'll make it. So, what I use to hold down my acrylic when I cut it, you can see that this is a, uh, what is this, 18 by 24 sheet of extruded acrylic, just par purchased from Lowe's or one of the other big box stores. I have etched designs into it and then cut out the pieces. Now I'll let you know each of these pieces will sell for about $11.50 a piece. So out of this $14 sheet, I've got uh, 40 pieces and I got 100% perfection this time. So the tape is put down. People talk about the tape and super glue method. This is the tape and spray glue method. Put tape down so I can get it up and keep all the gooey stuff off my uh, wasteboard. And I'm not, there are many different kinds of spray adhesive, but the kind I'm using right now is this Elmer's Craft Bond. There's other stuff that holds it down better or more, according to different people. Whatever you use that's a spray, that's what you should use. I'm not endorsing that necessarily, but that's what I've been using very successfully. Um, don't have to use two layers of uh, masking tape because one side of this already has a plastic protective coating on it. So I take it to another room, to my spray room, and I spray one side of the plexiglass that still has the plastic cover on it, nice and thoroughly all the way across it with the spray adhesive. Then I bring it back out and I press it down nice and hard on top of the masking tape. Then, Give it some time to cure. My next step is to do the etchings, which I do with a diamond drag bit, which I got from Bore, from Boring Research, which is a diamond drag bit I get from these guys. I'll put links down in the description so you can go straight to these. They have different spring strengths and different bits. I use the 90 degree bit and the uh, heavier spring to do this. Um, they're really kind of nice because the bits, to change them, they're actually just held in by a magnet and you can pull out the bit and put it back in the shaft. And it snaps right in place and there's a spring in there that gives it some give. I tried it with the lighter weight spring and it wouldn't even etch. So I used a heavier weight spring. They send you two springs with this, with this kit. All right, so that's what I used to etching. It took about five hours to etch all these Millennium Falcons and X-Wings into here. 40 different ones, one for, there's, these actually go in pairs. So there's two pieces, one has the X-Wing, one has the Millennium, but the 1150 a piece is what my little niche market loves to pay for them. All right, so I do the etching first took four or five hours, and since it's etching, there's no spinning router, you don't really have to be there. I go ahead and let the machine run by itself overnight. I don't feel any any fire danger or anything. The worst that's gonna happen is I'm gonna slam the machine over to one side and it's gonna shut down. So first, first night I do the etching, then I come back out, and for the cutting into the acrylic, I run it in separate paths. I run one path that is just all the holes, so it cut, drills all the holes in it with the 1 8 inch bit, which I used to buy the expensive $65 coated ones, and when I'd break one of those, I'd have a heart attack. But now I get these from Walmart, and this little package of 10 bits costs $15. Broke one last night on when it only ran about three inches because I had some vibration in the plastic, which I'll talk about in a second. Busted the bit, went, oh well, there goes a buck and a half, and pulled out another one and put it in there. The link to get these will be in the description. So using that bit, I cut all the holes. The reason I do that is sometimes stuff goes wrong. Sometimes stuff doesn't happen and then I can just run the whole path over again. Like if I 
set it and I don't get it deep enough for some reason, I can just run the whole path again and, and punch it down. Then I run another path that is all of the cutouts. This is 0 0.80 thickness plexiglass, and I actually do it in three passes. And the first two passes, um, it cuts about 0 0.7, 0 0.73 or so down into the plastic, and then the last time is around kind of like a finishing pass. A lot of times with the board not being completely flat, I'll see that the uh, bit will cut through all the way, and I'll see the, the plastic coating on the other side not getting cut, like right there. The plastic, I, this is so accurate that the plastic coating didn't cut on the other side, but then on this part of the board, I cut through the plastic coating and the tape and got a little bit of wood as well up on this end. So I, I'm pretty much due to resurface my board now. Um, now, one of the things that breaks bits a lot, okay, uh, I use uh, 80 inches per minute and three passes to cut through 0.8. And I was doing two passes and I was getting some, some jerking, some vibration on the bit, some side torque at 80 inches per minute and it was causing some rough edges. Now I'm getting super nice smooth edges and I don't even have to go through and file them again, or I mean sand them. I don't have to polish them up at all to get this kind of a surface. So, and then this side is a side that still has the adhesive on it, and I mean the, the, the coating on it, and I'll peel this off before I send it to the customer so it's nice and clean. So this has got the sticky and everything. This is what was holding it down, and that'll get peeled off before it goes to the customer. Now, I was talking about vibration a second ago. This isn't anywhere near two minutes, is it, guys? I had no idea how long I was going to talk about this. Um, I do not use dust collector. I don't use my dust shoe when I'm when I'm running this. I run it with a bare bit, so I always wear safety glasses and gloves. But while this is cutting, one of the things that breaks bits and causes bad edges is vibration of the plastic when it when it's cutting through and it's pulling across if the, if the plastic starts vibrating it'll snap a bit faster than you can say that's one of the things i had to learn by experience is if you're dealing with with the vibrating uh plastic because you might have a spot that you didn't get quite pressed down good enough and glued well enough a lot of times i have a hard time pr prying these up also when you glue the whole thing down it's going to feel nice and secure but small pieces can move so you get, you get side pressure and that, that small piece, there's not as many square inches holding it in place and that can move when, the, when it's got the, the cut. Plus it's gonna vibrate up and down when it starts getting through that, it'll vibrate like this and that'll break a bit. So what I do while I'm running it with, with protective gloves on, it, 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 you cannot leave this for a second. I hold the plastic down around the outside of the cut as it goes around, I always feel, and I feel for vibration with my hand, and I press down on it, trying not to press the board down. Um, I've got wood slats underneath my board to, uh, better than foam, but there is, I have seen some flex in some parts of the board if I press too hard. So I watch carefully, and I'll hold it down, and then after the bit has gone by like this, I'll actually put my hand in behind it with the glove on, uh, and, um, hold both this side and that side so that there can't be any moving. If you just hold it in the middle, you can, you can see this one's held down pretty darn good. Let's see if I can get it to come up. If you hold it down just in the middle, you can actually flex it. But uh, hold down with your finger over the gap. And it's most important on the last pass when it's cut through in one area to hold down the area that has been cut through already so that there is no movement left and right and to keep any vibration out of doing this. You have no problem at all when you're cutting the holes because it's just going straight down and doing a little jiggle to make this. This is These are a little bit over an eighth of an inch diameter in the holes. They're like, I, I don't remember the exact number, point, uh, point 0.1675, I think, uh, diameter holes in this. But it goes down, drills, does a little jiggle, and there's no vibration because the whole sheet's being held down. But once you start cutting into it, the center pieces will start vibrating and that will snap your bit. And also it gives you rough edges because when the, bit, when the, when the uh, plastic is going like this, it's not smooth against the bit. So I always spend the whole time, this cut took about 22 minutes to cut out all 40 pieces. 
I hold down and keep the outside area from vibrating. And it's, you know, it's like running through a table saw. You're gonna have your hand within an inch or so of the scary, dangerous, cut your finger off thing. So be super careful. It wouldn't hurt to have one of those uh, gauntlet metal gloves to uh, protect you like uh, some chefs use so they can't cut themselves with knives. And I don't, I'm about to get a pair because I have family worrying about me. But this one came out nice and perfect. I made one mistake here where I hit the, the Y jog instead of Z jog and I dragged the bit. I, I, I zero my Z out in the center somewhere rather than one end because that gives me more confidence that the average of what the board is going to be will, uh, you know, I, I've zeroed out, out here before and then just not cut through it all by the time it got over here with uh, temperature changes and, and humidity changes and that kind of changing the, the flex on my really expensive waste board I've got going on right there. So spray glue to hold it down. And when you're done, it'll just peel up like this. And that is over $400 worth of parts right there that I cut out. And um, I recommend you don't leave the tape down for a long period of time because it'll the, 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 the adhesive of the tape cures and then it's next to impossible to get off. So I peel the tape off every two or three days at the longest so that it doesn't have a chance to cure. I've done like three jobs on this section of tape and then this, this section up here was just for this, this job. But uh, oh, let's see, is there anything else I can think of? No, that's pretty much everything for this. Uh, links will be in the description. I really appreciate you guys paying attention. I'm sorry I'm not more professional and got a, got a you know, music coming in and going out kind of thing. But this is several months and lots of mistakes and a whole bunch of pieces of waste of plastic cutting out experience that I'm trying to share with everybody. And if you subscribe, I'll share other things when I learn them. And someday I'll get more professional. And uh, I hope all of you, <coughs> excuse me, have a really, really good day. Bye now.